what's going on it's your girl tina and i am back with another video i want to thank the love and excellence fam for watching so as i told y'all i am back with um the summary and the conclusion of the seven spiritual laws of success and um oh my gosh yeah today is still friday december the 20th i couldn't remember just then but it just clicked so y'all bear with me <laughs> all right y'all so um oh i'm shaking the camera all right so um yes i'm gonna go ahead and um give you all the summary and conclusion of the book um and i may even do read the section um about the author so you can get some more information about him as well um so it's not gonna be very long but as always, if you want to go ahead and grab your tea, your coffee, and your water as well, and you want to get a little comfortable um, so you can hear the summary and the conclusion and some information about the author, go ahead and let's get this knowledge together. All right, you guys, so the summary and the conclusion, and there is a little um, quote at the top, and that's what I'm going to read, and I'm going to go into the rest. All right. I want to know God's thoughts. The rest are details. The universal mind choreographs everything that is happening in billions of galaxies with elegant precision and unfaltering intelligence. Its intelligence is ultimate and supreme and it permeates every fiber of existence. From the smallest to the largest, from the atom to the cosmos. Everything that is alive is an expression of this intelligence. And this intelligence operates through the seven spiritual laws. If you look at any cell in the human body, you will see through its functioning the expression of these laws. Every cell, whether it's a stomach cell or a heart cell or a brain cell, has its birth in the law of pure potentiality. DNA is a perfect example of pure potentiality. In fact, it is the material expression of pure potentiality. The same DNA existing in every cell expresses itself in different ways in order to fulfill the unique requirements of that particular cell. Each cell also operates through the law of giving. A cell is alive and healthy when it is in a state of balance and equilibrium. The state of equilibrium is one of fulfillment and harmony, but it is maintained by a constant give and take. Each cell gives to and supports every other cell and in turn is nourished by every other cell. The cell is always in a state of dynamic flow and the flow is never interrupted. In fact, the flow is the very essence of the life of the cell. And only by maintaining this flow of giving is the cell able to receive and thus continue its vibrant existence. The law of karma is exquisitely executed by every cell because built into its intelligence is the most appropriate and precisely correct response to every situation as it occurs. The law of least effort is also exquisitely executed by every cell in the body. It does its job with quiet efficiency in the state of restful alertness. Through the law of intention and desire, every intention of every cell harnesses the infinite organizing power of nature's intelligence. Even a simple intention such as metabolizing a molecule of of sugar immediately sets off a symphony of events in the body where precise amounts of hormones have to be secreted at precise amounts to convert this molecule of sugar into pure creative energy. Of course, every cell expresses the law of detachment. It is detached from the outcome of its intention. It doesn't stumble, stumble or falter because its behavior is a function of life-centered, present moment awareness. Each cell also expresses the law of Dharma. Each cell must discover its own source, the higher self. It must serve its fellow beings, 
and express its unique talents. Heart cells, stomach cells, and immune cells all have their source in the higher self, the field of pure potentiality. And because they are directly linked to this cosmic computer, they can express their unique talents with effortless ease and timeless awareness. Only by expressing their unique talents can they maintain both their own integrity and the integrity of the whole body. The internal dialogue of every cell in the human body is, how can I help? The heart cell wants to help the immune cells. The immune cells want to help the stomach and lung cells. And the brain cells are listening to and helping every other cell. Every cell in the human body has only one function, to help every other cell. By looking at the behavior of the cells of our own body, we can observe the most extraordinary and efficient exp expression of the seven spiritual laws. This is the genius of nature's intelligence. These are the thoughts of God. The rest are details. The seven spiritual laws of success are powerful principles that will enable you to attain self-mastery. If you put your attention on these laws and practice the steps outlined in this book, you will see that you can manifest anything you want, all the affluence, money, and success that you desire. You will also see that your life becomes more joyful and abundant in every way. For these laws are also the spiritual laws of life that make life worthwhile. There's a natural sequence for the application of these laws in your daily life that may help you to remember them. The law of pure potentiality is experienced through silence, through meditation, through non-judgment, through communion with nature, but it is activated by the law of giving. The principle here is to learn to give that which you seek. That's how you activate the law of pure potentiality. If you seek affluence, give affluence. If you seek money, give money. If you seek love, appreciation, and affection, then learn to give love, appreciation, and affection. Through your actions and the law of giving, you activate the law of karma. You create good karma, and good karma makes everything in life easy. You notice that you don't have to expend a lot of effort to fulfill your desires which automatically leads to an understanding of the law of least effort. When everything is easy and effortless and your desires keep getting fulfilled, you spontaneously begin to understand the law of intention and desire. Fulfilling your desires with effortless ease makes it easy for you to practice the law of detachment. Finally, as you begin to understand all the above laws, you begin to focus on your true purpose in life, which leads to the law of Dharma. Through the use of this law, by expressing your unique talents and fulfilling the needs of your fellow humans, you begin to create whatever you want, whenever you want it. You become carefree and joyful, and your life becomes an expression of unbounded love. We are travelers on a cosmic journey. Stardust swirling and dancing in the eddies and whirlpools of infinity. Life is eternal, but the expressions of life are euphemerial, momentary, transient. Gautama Buddha, the founder of Buddhism, once said, this existence of ours is as transient as autumn clouds. To watch the birth and the death of beings is like looking at the movements of a dance. A lifetime is like a flash of lightning in the sky, rushing by like a torrent down a steep mountain. We have stopped for a moment to encounter each other, to meet, to love, to share. This is a precise moment, but it is transient. It is a little parenthesis in eternity. If we share with caring, lightheartedness and love, we will create abundance and joy for each other. And then this moment 
will have been worthwhile. All right, so that is the end. And I'm also going to read some information about the author. Um, the author, Dupac Copra, is a well-renowned leader in the fields of holistic health and human potential. He is the New York Times best-selling author of numerous books and audio programs that cover every aspect of mind, body, and spirit. His books have been translated into more than 50 languages, and he travels widely throughout the world promoting peace, health, and well-being. Copra is also the founder and executive director of the Copra Center at La Costa Resort and Spa in Carlsbad, California. All right, so... Yes, you guys, th that is the end of this book, you all. This book, I'm telling you, it is awesome. You have to go and get a copy. Um, like I said, he has audio books as well, so I'm pretty sure that you can get an audio copy of it if you would like to sit down and listen to it again and again. Because this, I've read this book several times already, and I still, I'm still reading it to this day. Um, as of right now... Um, today I got to chapter four, um, cause that's where I'm at now. Cause I'm reading it again. And the more I read it, it's just, the more it's like, wow. It's like amazing at how <sighs> spirituality is a beautiful thing. Once you embrace it and once you open up your mind to, um, the different possibilities and, and just giving giving it a chance. Um, I know that there are some that are religious and some things seem to come off as blasphemy or whatnot. But if you sit down and you just read, you listen to it and you read it, it, it all starts to make sense. But you have to read it more than one time. You cannot read it one time and then, okay, no, this is something that you really have to read more than once. Um, and you, um, like I said, it will definitely start to make sense to you. Um, if you enjoyed this book, you guys, please give this um, a thumbs up. Also, um, if you enjoy the content on our channel, hit the subscribe button. Um, let me know down in the comments what are your thoughts on this book. If you've ever read this book before, even watching um, my Read With Me sessions, let me know what you think about it. Um, I just want to hear your thoughts on it. And um, before, I would suggest this too, before you give your thoughts on it, I would listen to every segment. If you have not read this book before, I would go back and start with the introduction segment that I did on the book all the way up until now before you voice an opinion. Don't just come to one segment and then you just like, I'm lost. Yeah, because you, you're starting in the middle. You have to start at the beginning and go to the end and then give an opinion about it. All right. Um, let me know. Like I said, let me know what you guys think. All right, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and end this segment now. But I really enjoyed this segment with you all. And I'm definitely going to come back with more. So until the next video, as always, if it ain't excellent, it's irrelevant. Until next time.